Hey guys. Hey guys, Ben here. I've got my uh, 2010 Toyota Tacoma. It's uh, it's four wheel drive, uh, TRD, four door, automatic. Um, I've had trouble with the actuator for the transfer case and with the ADV actuator, just getting water in them, not working as well as they could. Read a bunch about the FJ case swap and went down that rabbit hole. The other day got to a trailhead, couldn't get four wheel drive to engage, pretty frustrating. Looked up the price of a new um, actuator the uh, for the transfer case on the Tacoma. <clears throat> And they were expensive enough that I decided I'm not going to mess with it. I'm just going to buy a, a Toyota FJ Cruiser case. I ended up finding one out of a wrecked 2008 that had 140,000 miles on it. I got that shipped uh, for $321. It still had all the wiring on it. It still had the FJ shifter on it. So got an incredible deal on that. Um, bought some other miscellaneous parts. This is for sure a sub $400 project. And I think it's gonna be a huge step in making an already reliable truck just that much more reliable. Awesome, so let's get into it. So we're going to just start popping these 12 mil bolts out of the T-case. We're going to get a couple of the lower ones, the easier to get to ones, before we put the jack under it. And just remember, it's important to remember that if you just left the junkyard and picked up your T-case and it's 100 degrees outside, the exhaust is going to be really hot, so don't touch that part. I haven't done this before, taking the T-case out of second gen. But it looks like all my electrical connections are loose. But it's kind of hard to see, but right here, there's a bolt. And it looks like it holds a bracket that holds all of this stuff. So I'm going to go ahead and pop that loose too. And yeah, get the dash taken apart, cut my hole, and start fitting this big guy into the truck.
right, so I took out, um, took off the shifter, the top of the shifter. It just unscrews, you saw that. Took out the two bolts on this side. Took out, and those are both 12. Took out these two 10 mils. You probably can't see it, but they're inside your center console underneath the uh, carpet. And then all this stuff, at least for me, popped out pretty nice and easy without a uh, without a lot of trouble or without a screwdriver. So, all right. So channel locks did it. The little C-clip for the shifter is out. All right, so this is about clear as mud to me. So my neighbor, Rick, and I, he came over with some uh, liquid encouragement here. <laughs> And um, we're trying to mimic one of the pictures from the forum and make it work. So the best I've been able to lay out is that I'm gonna drill a hole right here with a three and a quarter inch hole saw. And I have no idea if that's a smart idea or not, but I'm gonna go ahead and do it. <laughs> Uh, the antique Makita and the four and a quarter the cut was okay I ended up this red or this uh, maroon you see right here is a towel that I put over the um, over the transmission because it's just open down there and I didn't want to get all these metal shavings in it so I, I don't know if it's right or not but I'm just gonna cut this off right in this area so that I've got enough material here to weld back and enough here to weld back So as of right now, um, there was some of it we didn't film. I just, there were so many fingers and tools in the way. We just put the cotter pin back in. We had taken the shifter assembly, like the actual shifter part out. I, I'm sorry, I didn't get video of it. And then put the case in without the shifter. So these four bolts were still in there and the breather part was on, but we removed this cotter pin and took those five pieces out neatly in order, stacked them off to the side, and now it's back in there. And you can see our kind of homemade, or our, our not homemade, but made up measurements based on some photos we found on, on the forum. Uh, really got us super close. So we're gonna start trimming this um, automatic shifter to go, to bolt back down This might be a little too much, but just as a guide to cutting it, there's a little uh, there's a little flap here on top, and basically all of that material um, out of there with the oscillator, at least as far as I can tell right now, leaves plenty of room for the shifter. We're gonna start messing with the shifter and get this bolted back in, um, kind of temporarily mocked up, and then we're gonna put the dash back together and start figuring out where that actual shifter is gonna land. All right, so I managed to forget to uh, press record again, but uh, this just happened. I've got the factory FGA handle that I cut off. I've also got a bed bolt out of an old Tacoma. Um, and I don't know what I'm gonna use exactly because the thread pattern's the same. And I wish I had the boot here um, so that I kind of knew, because my neighbor Rick was talking and mentioned that like I might want to keep that bevel depending on what kind of boot I'm gonna use. But um, the concern is that this material is too thick for the, the, the small size of the center console to get full range of that shifter. So I've got that factory FJ shifter and I welded a four inch 716 uh, grade eight to it that I had laying around. 
we'll try that in a minute. Uh, Melissa just brought home tacos, so we're gonna pause the video for a while. Before the break, uh, I took a break for taco time. I was able to get this tacked in there, but it's like all the way up against here on this side. I think I'm gonna have to use something thinner because I can get high range, but it bumps the edge and not because I don't think there's enough throw in the stick. I think it's one of two things. I either need to like kick this up a little straighter into that corner and turn that other bolt this way further because I think that'll give me more distance or what I might do is just get rid of this thick piece and just go with that um, somewhere around here this I've got this bed bolt from a Tacoma that's the same thread as the factory FJ shifter and I could just put it on here and that gives me the height I need but not the thickness of this thing. And I don't think it's a big deal because I think the boot, if I can find a nice one, should cover all of that, so. All right, guys, on try number like 7,652, way too many sparks, way too many grinder terribles happening inside of the, what used to be a nice car. We now have this nifty deal. And it rubs a little bit. I may adjust that one more time, um, but I kind of just ran out of gas for tonight. But right now, we're done with all the electronic crap. Now you can just shift like a grown-up, the way Toyota probably should have made it. All right, guys, I've got a little cleanup to do on this thing, but for reference, and uh, don't don't mind all the burnt carpet. Uh, that was a, a slight unfortunate thing that happened. Um, but yeah, this thing is uh, is installed. It's all booger welded. I've got to take that off now and clean it up. I'm going to do one more slight adjustment to it because it rubs a tiny bit on the edge. All right. I bought a cheap Amazon shift boot. I'm um, just a Spectre Performance makes the small shift boot. The dimensions worked out to be about the right size. All right, so I took this little cover off. There's a 10 mil bolt right underneath the catch for the um, glove box that you can take off to expose your four-wheel drive ECU. I unplugged those and all of my dash lights are off now. Um, Cause if you've done this swap, once you plug it all back in, if you haven't done the wiring yet, it probably has like a diff lock button or a diff lock light and four wheel drive and low range lights on all the time. So I'm just trying to make the lights function. I'm doing an ADD delete and I'll show you more about that here in a little bit, but it's uh, red to gray. So I've cut, I haven't done it yet, but it's this gray and black to the red. And then it's this yellow and black to the brown and white according to the website. So I've not actually tried it yet. Um, I'll give it a go and see if it works. So on page 30, the Let's See Your FJ case swaps from uh, Tacoma World, it shows that this is number two and this is number one. I've got that one cut. Sorry, it's, I had it backwards there. I've got those wires cut and those go to the outlet on the driver's side, the forward one, not the one with this green loom on it right here and the plug still. It goes to this one and I've left those wires long. I got lucky and kept them so I don't have to, me I can mess around with the wiring after the fact. So I'm gonna hook those up there and then this plug here will go over to this uh... all right folks so it took me a little bit of troubleshooting i've still got to all clean all this up um so on a 2010 tacoma i've got for my uh, 
for my dash lights. I am gray and black wire from the ECU harness to red and blue. I am uh, brown and white to yellow and black. I still have to heat shrink those and clean that up a little bit. Um, underneath the truck, I have another mess that needs cleaned up, but the red and blue wire goes to the sensor on this side on top and then yellow black goes to the driver's side sensor in the front and then this one's just capped it has spades on it because i was troubleshooting i had a little bit of trouble figuring this out but um for reference this is a single stick fj case on a 2010 toyota tacoma trd so it's a rear locked double cab automatic truck. And that's where the uh, drive line goes when it breaks. <clears throat> but yeah, so let me show you the dash. Oh man, look at that Christmas tree lights. There's so many lights. All right, so that one's for fun and it never goes off. But what we're looking at here is pull the shifter back into high range and the four wheel drive light comes on, move it over and engage low in that far forward position. Low, neutral, two wheel drive. So we have dash lights. Um, I think the last thing we have left is ADD delete. So let's get after it. All right, so the ADD actuator here, um, I did this the other day and had it off, and it's a little bit of a pain. I read about folks who had to, like, uh, I forget, drop the diff a little bit or something like that to get to it. I actually was lucky enough to be able to get to all four of these 12 mil bolts pretty easily. Um, you can kind of get your hand up in on top of the diff tube to get the top two and then slide this thing out. With a short uh, 12 mil and a ratchet, you can go in between the pan. You can kind of feel around. This passenger side top bolt is the hardest one to get to. The other three are super straightforward but there's room enough in here to get uh, a ratchet in here and move it without the skid on. Obviously, you're not gonna do any of this with the skid on. Okay, so now there's the hole for the ADD. There's a hole in the front of the diff for the ADD, right? So. You can feel there's a collar in there that moves slightly. So what I'm gonna do, right now I'm turning the shaft, front shaft and nothing's happening, right? Um, and then I'm gonna slide the collar towards the driver's side while turning the shaft. And that's the position you want the collar in to be in so that the, the ADD is deleted. So the breather nipple goes towards the driver's side of the vehicle. The plug goes towards the passenger side of the vehicle. So we've pushed that collar all the way that way. We're gonna put this cover back on.
All right, so I've just kind of scraped this, cleaned it, wire wheeled it. I've got, uh, I hit the inside of it with brake clean just to keep any gunk that I just flung up with the, uh, with the wire wheel out of there since this is the inside of our differential. I don't want to get gunk in here and we need to reseal all of this. So now I'm going to do the same thing on the face of the differential, clean the gear oil up. We'll RTV this, reinstall it in the truck. Got the boot on here. It's looking good, cleaned up. While I was in there, I pulled the wires for the CB radio and messed around with some other stuff. Got uh, some more fun things that I did. Got a little USB mounted in the center console while it was all torn apart, so. But this is kind of the, the final product on that thing. Um, it does rub right here a tiny bit, um, so I might end up getting just a little bit smaller FJ or a little bit smaller knob than the FJ one or I've got about an inch I can still cut out of here and because this is tapered I think if I could drop this a little bit I could clear it with the shifter handle but that's the final product I need to look around and find the pre-runner part number I'm sure it's on the on the Tacoma World thread on the let's see those FJK swaps so I'll dig around on there and see if I can't find one. And I think I might be able to fit a couple of rocker switches in there for some lights and stuff, but pretty stoked on this swap in general. It was uh, my first time biting off anything like this. And um, yeah, it really went pretty well. I'm stoked on the, on the fit and the finish. Um, really pretty fun and I think it's an enormous upgrade from a reliability standpoint for these trucks.